Well, thanks for uh, inviting me to be your uh, sponsor. Uh, I'm Jeremy Moskowitz, uh, Enterprise Mobility MVP, and today we're going to crush it with group policy and Intune. Now, in different ways, uh, I loved what all the speakers did. I'm going to ride the coattails of Chris. I'm going to ride the coattails of Donna. I'm going to ride the coattails of Chad, and I'm going to ride the coattails of Julie. Like, that was great. They put the golf ball on the tee for me perfectly, and we're going to take all the stuff you just learned and put it on rails. That's today's that's today's endeavor. So I've been a 16-year MVP, and I wrote these two big fat group policy and MDM books. And uh, if you like what you see here today and you want to start a trial of Policy Pack, um, I'll give you my email address at the end, and I'll pick three people, and you can pick either the group policy or MDM books, and I'll ship them signed and send them to you. So if I have like 50 people who want to do a trial, can't do that, but I can take three people. So I'll give you my email address at the end, okay? Um, if you fall in love with it, you might think to yourself, you might be holding on to the question of, gosh, how hard is this thing to set up? I'm going to jump right to the end and tell you how easy it is to set up. The admin installs this thing called the admin console. It hooks into the group policy editor you already use, and it does all the things, including getting you ready to work with Intune as well. So there's a little admin console. There's no server side thing at all. On the client, you install the client side extension. We hook into the same exact infrastructure that Microsoft wants you to, to extend Active Directory and group policy and Intune. It's called the client side extension. You'll see, you just run GP update or you do an, uh, a, a, an MDM sync and you're off to the races. So this is incredibly easy to get set up. Most customers can get up and running in under 30 minutes, not a joke. Okay, so let's go through the kinds of challenges that we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna spend most of our time on this idea of the right browser and the right Java for the right website. Um, one of the speakers put it really, really well. It's like, hey, I go to uh, certain websites like my time card app, or I go to try to run some Java thing and I just get the wrong it's just not going well because you know that certain browsers need to open the certain websites at the right time. And I'm going to spend most of my time in demo showing you this because you've got four browsers. You've got Internet Explorer. You've got Firefox. You've got Chrome. You've got Edge. In fact, you might got something weird, too. You might have something weird like the Citrix protected browser. You might have a uh, an unusual browser that is a, a language specific that you wrapped up with uh, uh, at V or some other kind of packaging utility. Not a problem. When you go to the right URL, you want to go to the right website. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that with Policy Pack Browser Router and Policy Pack Java Rules Manager. I'll spend most of my time on this. So the idea is that we're going to map websites that you want to open in the right browser. You're going to manage this using the clicks that you already know how to do using the same tech that we already talked about, actually. Um, block websites for the block the naughty websites and deploy using the technology you already have, group policy, uh, SCCM, Intune, or if you have something unusual, that's okay too. We work with what you already have, okay? There's a quote from a customer. Browser router was the only policy tool we found that provided the level of granularity that re that required us uh, to manage the heck out of our browsers. With policy pack, there's no learning curve. It's just very intuitive and easy to use. Yeah, I agree. I, I love that because you already know how to use it. This is a GPO. You know GPOs. You know policies. You know preferences, which means you already know policy pack. Inside the browser router configuration space, you're just going to make a route. This is how you do it. You just give it a name. You give it a URL or a wildcard, or if you're a really badass, you can give it a regular, regular expression or a specific internet security zone, and you can dictate exactly what browser you want to go to. So in this example, internalapp.fabricam.com, I don't care what my source browser is. I just know that I want to end up in Internet Explorer, set it to Internet Explorer 8 mode, and open up in Internet, open, open up in Edge, uh, rather in standalone IE mode. Great, that's four clicks, and you are done. While the site list manager tool does work, it actually doesn't get you from any browser to any other browser. We basically are creating that item on the fly and let you use it from any browser to any other browser. So how does it work in practice? You just run GP update, and you're off to the races. I'm going to show you that during the live demo. Now, what if you've got Intune, I hear you cry, and you love this and you, you, you just can't wait to use it? Not a problem. The way that it works is, and we already talked about it, you need the client side extension to make it go. There's a little license file to make it go. And then the last piece of the puzzle in Intune land is you're going to add a set of exported directives, and you're going to deploy that to your endpoint machines. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm going to show you this in the demo. I'm just sort of pre-framing what we're going to learn. Then when we go to your MDM enrolled endpoint, what do you do? You click on sync, 
and magic occurs. That's all there is to it. Now, if we have some a little time at the end, uh, I'll also show you how to do some bonus stuff, like organize your browsers into the right start screen positions. Nobody likes to like fumf around for the right applications at the wrong time. If you're a doctor or nurse or other kind of worker like that, you just want to get to your applications or browsers immediately. Don't hunt and peck on the left. Click and go on the right. So that's if we have time, we can show that. And also the idea like you just want to open up the right application with the right file extension. I can show you how to do that because not everybody loves PDFs opening an edge. If we have time permitting, I'm going to show that. I just wanted to point it out that we can manage the heck out of start screen, taskbar, and file associations as well, even if I don't have a chance to get to it. I am, however, going to show you this idea where some downloads and installs, you know, maybe could be permitted provided you should have the right permissions. But you know what? Running with admin rights, no bueno. You don't want to give users local admin rights just to install software, right? But the problem is, is that a standard user can't install software. They're blocked to install software. And this can come up in like a student and teacher scenario where a teacher needs to have the rights to keep certain applications uh, um, up to date. And I've got a particular browser application that I want to point this out at as soon as I get to my demo. So this is my email address. Write it down and then, uh, or somebody can maybe type it into the chat for everybody. Jeremy M at policypak.com. And like I said, if you like what you see here and you want to do a trial, I will uh, provide a, you know, <laughs> I will give three different books away. So let's go ahead and sort of get started with, uh, with the demo. Like I said, the first thing I wanted to talk about was, I don't know if you know about this browser, this browser called the Respond Us browser. Um, all, you know, all browsers have utility and this browser is meant specifically for student and teacher scenarios. Where the um, where the teacher needs to install this particular browser. But gosh, this Windows account does not belong to the administrators group because this is a standard user, and you don't want to give somebody admin rights. This thing says give this person admin rights. Terrible idea. What you can do with Policy Pack, one of our main features, is this idea where you can use Group Policy or MDM. We'll create a GPO and do PPLPM uh, browser install demo. Okay, so I'm going to create a new GPO here that's going to craft a directive to that endpoint to enable that teacher to install that browser. So we'll go to Least Privilege Manager, and we're not going to give admin rights. That's that's bananas. What we're going to do instead is create a new executable policy. This is going to create a specific rule. I'll create a simple rule here, and I'll say, look, when I see that particular version of that browser, okay, that particular thing, which is called Respond Us Browser, when I see this guy, then it's cool. We're going to run it with elevated privileges, okay? Giving just the least amount of rights required in order to perform the operation. So with that in mind, we'll run GP update here. Oops. Give this a second to catch up. And as I mentioned before, Policy Pack hooks into the group policy and MDM framework you already have. There's nothing more to buy or build. We don't make you like get new server infrastructure or whatever, and you're off to the races. So let's now go ahead and double click on this extra browser. 10 seconds ago, we got a directive that said, hey, you're not in the local admins group. What are you going to do? Well, instead of giving that person the admin rights, boom, you can see we're off to the races. We've overcome the admin requirement for this particular application, and we could do the same for any application that throws a UAC prompt or if you want to uh, you know, do other parts of the operating system. So again, this is a particular browser that helps with testing in a student teacher scenario. I just wanted to point that out. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this idea where you've got lots and lots of browsers and lots and lots of websites that you want to go to the right place. For instance, you might want Mozilla.org to go to uh, Firefox. You might want Google.com to go to Chrome. You might want PolicyPack.com to go to IE, but not just IE. You want it to go into Edge in IE8 mode. Whew, that's a tall order. You want this one to go to your default browser, whatever that is, because maybe that could change over time. You want Microsoft.com to go to, uh, to, to Edge, and you want MSN to go to IE standalone. Whoa, how are you going to do this? I hear you cry. Well, it's very easy. Now, I've already got this set up just to prove a point, and then I'm going to add more routes. So I'm going to show you that it's all set up and working, and then I'm going to show you how I did it. So for instance, I go ahead and click on mozilla.org. What's my expectation? Boom, there's Firefox, okay, right there. And if I were to go to google.com, I want Chrome to open up. Now you can anticipate that these, these links are coming from uh, a Teams message, they're in a PDF, you're in an email, they're any, you're getting these links in any number of ways, okay? I go to internet, I go to policypack.com, and what do we get in this particular case? 
Well, this is the this is the the main one. You can see there's Internet Explorer in edge mode, and I've set the goofy Internet Explorer mode just to prove a point. Now my beautiful website looks terrible uh, on purpose. And then if I were to go to uh, Amazon, this is my default browser. Gosh, what's what is my default browser? Maybe we'll come back to that in a second. If I go to Microsoft.com, we want that to go to Edge. What does that look like here? No, nope, there we go. That's in Edge. That's perfect. And if we go to MSN.com, that goes to Internet Explorer in standalone mode. Gosh, we did it. Now, if we take a look at um, the default browser, let's take a look at the what the user sees as their default browser. Choose default web browser. Okay, uh, managed by your IT department and it's Firefox. Huh, okay, great. So if I were to pick anything that doesn't have a route, that's going to go to my default browser, which is Firefox. Now, I can change the default browser for my users in mass if I want to, because I know that a lot of companies are starting off right now either in Internet Explorer or in Chrome, and they want to they want to transform which uh, default browsers different categories of users are using. And the good news is you can target exactly which groups of users can have the new default browser, so you're not rolling it out all in one big shot and then having to field a bunch of phone calls. No, no, no. You can hone in exactly who's going to get this new default browser and any of these routes, and I'll show you how to do that. So that's the first piece. The second piece is that what we enable you to do is to go any to any browser from the browser. So I just showed you all that magic superpower stuff. I just want to make sure everything is closed. I showed you all that magical superpower stuff by clicking on the links. It's actually more than that. If I were to go here and I were to go to google.com, what we're going to see here is close the wrong browser, open up the right browser. Let me show you that again. Let me show you that one more time. I'm in the wrong browser and I know that my route for Google is supposed to go to the Chrome browser. We're going to close the wrong browser and open up the right browser. OK, that is the magic. And if you're in the browser here, let's say you were to Google for a policy pack. That's all fine. Google away. Google for policy pack all you want. But when you click on policy pack, we said, what do we want? We want Internet Explorer 8 in edge mode. Watch what we do. Click on here, close the wrong browser, open the right browser in Internet Explorer 8 in edge mode. And you can see there's Internet Explorer 8 in edge mode. OK, so how do we set up new routes? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So let's go ahead and show you how I do it. I go back over to my GPO here. I already have it open and it's linked over to my universe here. And it's very, very simple. It kind of goes like this. Add a new policy. And if we wanted to do something like uh, MSNBC rule or something like that, whatever, you can give it a name. You can give it a URL like msnbc.com or you can give it a wild card like star well actually i'll do cbs i like cbs cbs rule so if i do wild card star cbs star i can dictate exactly where this should go internet explorer edge chrome firefox or whatever so i'll i'll go ahead and say chrome right now and then once we know that we're, we're we don't want to use chrome anymore for it we can dictate it right to say edge so let's go ahead and start it off cbs.com goes to chrome land let's go ahead and try that out for size so we'll go back over here we'll run gp update and what i'll do for my quick test is i'll go www.cbs.com just to sort of like pre-stage and we said right now we want this to go to chrome land all right give this a quick second to catch up all right and now let's go ahead and click on cbs now, remember, our default browser was Firefox, but we click on CBS.com and bang, we get it right into Chrome land just the way we expect, which is super nice. OK, give CBS a second to sort of catch up. It's got big, chunky graphics. It takes like five seconds to load. Paw Patrol, excellent. All right, so now let's go ahead and change our mind and say like, OK, this website has been up to date. We can now commit to using it in Edge. That's not a problem. What do we do? We go back over here, go back to CBS rule. We're going to change this puppy over to Edge and bang, that's it. Now we're saying anytime we go to CBS, go over to Edge, go over to GP update, give that another second to kick in. Remember, you already know how to use it because it already hooks into the group policy editor you know and love. OK, and then what I'll do is I'll create, uh, I'll then change this over after that to, uh, to something more complicated. All right, so now that we've done that, Let's go ahead and say we want it to go into edge. There we go. We're now in edge mode, right? There we can see we're in edge. And then lastly, let's go ahead and convert um, CBS.com. Actually, I'll create a new one. I'll just do new policy here. I'll do I'll do a different TV station. Why not new policy here? I'll do NBC. Whoops, rule whatever. And this will be dub dub dub. NBC.com and I want this to be an Internet Explorer. 
I want this to be in Internet Explorer 8 mode. I want this to be in Internet Explorer in Edge tab mode. Whew, gosh, that's the tall order. Go ahead and click OK and you're done. So instead of creating the site list rules, which does work, I'm not beating it up in any way. In fact, we're creating those two. We're creating them on the fly per user in one freaking GPO. The downside of using the inbox stuff from Microsoft, although it's great, the downside is you need multiple GPOs, multiple policies, and multiple things. With us, you don't need to do that. So if we were to go to NBC.com, okay, we said we want this to go to Internet Explorer 8. Bang, there we go. Just like that, we're off to the races. Okay, let's uh, let's move it along to the next. Oh, actually, I forgot one more important part, which is uh, naughty websites. So if we go to face, don't worry, I'm not going to go to a real naughty website. Facebook.com. Okay, what do we want? What do we want to have happen when we go to Facebook.com? Well, we, we want to make it so that no no user in any browser can do that. So if we open up a browser, we don't care what the browser is, and you go to Facebook.com, we're going to block you. But you could, if you wanted to. Google about Facebook, that's okay. Google about Facebook all you want. But when it comes time to actually go to Facebook, we're going to block you in any browser all in one shot. Oh, and the last thing I said I needed to do was to change the default browser. So let's go back to that. Change, uh, choose a default web browser here. You can see managed by your IT department, and it's Firefox. When it's time to make the move, we have the default browser policy. You can see I have Firefox as my default right now. When it's time to go to Edge, it's one click and you're done. That's it. If you have different people who have different needs, I'm not going to demo this exactly, but if you have different people with different needs, you can do what's called item level targeting and specify that particular users or computers can dict can get exactly this configuration. So if you want to say when you're in the office, you get these, out of the office, you get those. If you're on this IP range, this, out of the, you know, this IP range, that, everything is possible in policy pack land with regards to item level targeting. That's why we can do this all in one GPO instead of like 12 different GPOs. So I'm saying managed by your IT department. And then the other thing I wanted to do was change the look and feel to um, managed by, um, let's see, managed by browser, whoops, managed by browser summit. So now you know I'm not making this up here. All right, there we go. And we're going to put it in parentheses, which is going to be edge. Let's go back over here. Let's go back over here. Let's run GP update and do all the things. OK, so now what I've done is remember, I said that uh, Amazon was going to my default browser. You saw that earlier. How do we know what my default browser is? Well, after this uh, catches up, we'll go ahead and check that out one more time. Take a look at our default browser. Choose a default browser and boom, managed by Browser Summit, Microsoft Edge. We know that this Amazon.com was going to our default, and now, bang, just like that, we've converted a chunk of our population over to Edge in a controlled fashion without having to rip the Band-Aid off and field all those calls. So I hope this is translating and makes a whole lot of sense for you. Okay, um, next on the docket is dealing with those old and crusty websites that deal with Java. Okay, so let's go ahead. If I were to go to uh, Internet Explorer directly here, I've got a couple of web pages here. Actually, if I want to change this to Internet Options here and change this to uh, policypack.com slash Java 1 and Java 2. And you're welcome to use these for testing if you want to that's totally fine so let's go ahead and try that one more time so if i go to internet explorer here i've got two old and crusty websites that um that are showing up here in in edge in internet explorer mode but this is my favorite part java throws prompts users don't know what to do everything sort of catches fire falls over and dies this is just like maybe the worst possible experience for a user okay you're blocked it's just like nothing good comes out of this but yet you have it. You have it. You've got this exact problem. What are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to create some Java rules here under Java Rules Manager. We're going to add a new policy, one for each website. We'll call this one Rule 1. And this is, uh, I want to make sure I don't mistype. Oh, it doesn't matter. I guess I'll just do it by hand. So we'll just do HTTPS www.policypack.com uh, slash Java 1. And we want to say when you're on this website, we want to very specifically marry it to a version of Java that's on your machine, 7.51. I, I do have this version on the machine. And if I didn't, that would be a security concern. And so I don't want to, I, I would throw an error, but I actually do have it, so I should be okay. The second thing I want to do is add another one for Java 2. 
and call this rule two, rule two. And then I also want to say I want to run only and specifically Java 8.25, Java 8.25, which I happen to have on the machine as well. Let's stop there. Let's see the completely different experience that we get. So we'll go ahead and run GP update, and then we'll open up, um, we'll open up uh, uh, Internet Explorer, which will then route to uh, Edge, and then try to rerun those Java applets and see what happens. We should get a completely different experience. So we'll go to Internet Explorer here. Boom, Java one, Java two. If we go go to Java one here, no more no more prompts. And this is a little Java tester applet, and you can see that it, it's a little bit hard to read. So I'll zoom in. Seven fifty one for Java one website. And if I go to the second website, look at that. We have eight twenty five for the second website. Java 2. So in just like that, you're able to convert things over. And you know what? If you want to really crank the thumbnails down, if you want to go to policypack.com slash Java 3, okay, where we haven't we haven't expressly described a website that uses Java, maybe we should just put the thumb put the, put the thumb screws on and really crank it down because security is the most important thing. So if we add a new what's called default policy, our new default policy, whoops, we can say just block everything that we don't make a route for. So gotta call IT and get permission. Okay, something like that. All right, we're not beating the user up. We just want to make sure that like they don't do something naughty. So let's go ahead and run GP update. We'll go back to that final Java 3 page, which we don't have a connection for. We didn't authorize it, so they're going to get a block message. Everything by default is going to be blocked, except for the stuff that we've said is allowed. So if we go back to uh, Internet Explorer here, Java 2, and we'll, we'll go ahead and try to run Java 3. Java 3. Okay, what's our experience in Java 3? Boom. Application blocked by the rule set. And the reason is you got to call and get permission. So in this way now, you can see we've sort of married the two concepts together, the right browser for the right website and the right Java for the right website. That way you don't have any challenges uh, whatsoever. OK, the next thing I want to talk about is um, managing the actual settings within both your browsers and your middleware. So. Uh, I think the speakers did a fantastic job. Uh, I think, you know, I think Chris did a great job explaining how Chrome can be managed. Uh, and we also got a lot of directives about how Edge could be managed. You know who didn't get any love? Firefox. Firefox is uh, Firefox is one of the premier browsers and it has a bajillion settings. It's got all these settings about config. It's got like, I don't know, 3000 settings that you might need to uh, that you might need to configure here. Whoops. There we go. All right, there we go. So if I wanted to look for uh, you know, any of these kind of settings here, there's like 3,000 different settings that you can flip on or off, or even some of the more uh, common things. Like, let's just go right for something simple. If we go to Tools Options, I think we can all agree it's probably not such a great idea to let users allow logons and saving for passwords for websites. I don't know, but I think that's probably a terrible idea. And then the other thing I kind of want to clear up at the same time is if I were to go to um, if I were to go to Java here and take a look at configure Java um, again, middleware important for your apps. Maybe we don't want to keep it updated because you know that if you upgrade to the latest version of Java that the Java police can come find you for like 180 bucks per machine or something like that. I have a whole white paper on that. It's just ridiculous. And also the security and advanced things you might want to configure these because let's look at these for a second. Do we want our users to be able to use SSL 2.0 and uh, TLS 1.0 and 1.1? Terrible ideas. You want to dictate the most secure configuration and lock it down so that users can't be naughty and work around your settings. So let's go ahead and close out of this. We'll go ahead and close out of this. We'll go ahead and create a new GPO for, uh, I'll go ahead for all of my sales team and I'll do PPAM demo one here for application settings manager. And we have over 500 pre-configured packs to manage the heck out of your applications. I'm only going to do two. I'm going to do a little thing for Firefox, not to mention all the about config settings, but I'm going to do one little thing for Firefox here just to prove a point. If I were to go to privacy, uncheck passwords for websites and lock it down so that users can't be naughty and work around it. 
And if I were to also go to right click new application for Java, what I'm going to do here in Java land here is I'm going to go to update and say, no, thank you. I'm going to go to security four and I'm going to say no, thank you to these old and crusty junky protocols. However, I do want TLS 1.2 because that is the most secure. And while I'm here, let's go ahead and say no, thank you by locking out the end user standard user from reducing our security at the entire company. Terrible idea. So let's go ahead and lock down the user so they can't be naughty and work around it. OK, that's it. So let's go run GP update here and we'll go ahead and check out Firefox. We'll go ahead and check out. Um, we'll go ahead and check out uh, uh, Java and then we'll see how we do. All right, so that's the uh, give us a second to quickly catch up here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Firefox land. If we go to tools options here. I just gave one setting, but there's a bajillion billion of them. If I were to take a look, bing, 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 bing. Ah, there we go. No more asking to save passwords and websites, and that's locked down. Users can't be naughty and work around it. There's other things like the, the, the Firefox proxy and a bunch of other privacy and security settings you don't want to be on the wrong end of. And if we take a look at the Java configuration here, okay, what did we say? Updates? No, thank you. We go to security, uh, advanced rather. We take a look at the protocols. What do we say? Yep. Goodbye, old and junky protocols. Hello to only the most secure configuration that our company will support. So in this way, we're giving you this toolbox worth of things that enable you to really get down to business and make your browsers, Java applications, and desktop way more secure. Okay. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is getting everything you saw over to Intune land. OK, so here is a similar uh, configuration to what I had earlier. It's the same kind of text file, same exact thing. I want you to think you've gone, you've dialed it all the way. You're using autopilot. That person's opening that machine the first time and man, they're having a great time. It's awesome, except it totally doesn't work, right? Why is that? Because you know that different browsers and all those other configuration options, there's no way to set that using Intune. So everything I click on is going to go through Edge. I'm going to click on Mozilla and Google and Polispec. It's all going to go through Edge. What are we going to do? How do we take the rules that we already man that we already created earlier and get them over to our Intune? Well, let's see how to do that. So let's go back to the GPO we had configured earlier, the browser router demo GPO. And everything you do in Policy Pack land is exportable. OK, so if I were to go to browsers, here's the browser router stuff that we configured earlier together, the collection we created earlier. I'm going to right click the collection and export as XML. OK, and I'll go ahead and give this, I'll put this on the desktop in XMLs and I'll call this uh, PPBR Summit 2. OK, so I've got a file. You could do this for the least privileged stuff. You could do this for the Java stuff. You can do this for any freaking GPO, by the way, as well. So if you've got any kind of GPO setting that doesn't exist in Intune land, we got you covered in Policy Pack land. OK, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take. I uh, just want to get rid of all this stuff here. But then we've got a little utility called the Policy Pack Exporter Utility. We're going to let you take that exported XML. We're going to let you add those XMLs. OK, let's go back to desktop and we'll go to XMLs and we'll go ahead and import the summit export that we just created 10 seconds ago. You can see it's browser router. If we had least privilege or any GPO setting, they would just be here. We'll go ahead and click next and create an MSI for us to use. I'm going to put it right on the desktop and call it summit. Actually, I'll call it underscore summit one, two, three dot MSI. OK, so there it is. Summit one, two, three dot MSI is somewhere on there. And then here is my Intune. OK, let's take a breath for a second. How do we get settings? How do we get policy pack stuff to work in Intune? I showed you in the slides. It's worth describing again. Whoops. Let's go back to apps here. What do you need? You need to have the, the client side extension. That's the moving part that makes it go. I've already deployed that using Intune. You need to have the license file. I've got that deployed. I'm going to make it go. Next thing you need to do is add the settings file that we just talked about 10 seconds ago. I'm going to add a line of business app. Go ahead and click select. I'm going to go ahead and pick my package file, which I put on my desktop here. So I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to find the file. There it is, summit123.msi. And I'm going to just target it toward the machines that I want. So I'll go ahead and click next. I'll go ahead and add a group and I'll go ahead and pick the particular group. OK, now because I don't want to wait 
the cloud minute. I am definitely stealing that. That's like my favorite new phrase of the day because I don't want to wait the cloud minute to get this deployed to my end computers. Okay, I'm going to accelerate the hands of time. Of course, you know, I could click on here. I could click info. I could click sync and I could get the thing. Instead, we're going to wave our arms and do a little magic trick and pretend Intune is actually doing the deployment. I have the same settings right here. Don't tell anyone. Okay, so here's my browser router settings MSI that I created knowing that I was going to be here. Admin, okay. This is Intune doing the work underneath the hood. You don't see this part, okay? And there we go. It's done all the work. That's all there is to it. Intune did the thing. And now these websites that would only open up an edge are now going to open up in the right website, comma, as well as all the other policy pack and group policy things you want to do. So this is supposed to open up in Firefox. What do we get? We get it in Firefox. There we go. And then if we were to open up Google.com, we want that to open up in Chrome. What do we get? We get it in Chrome. There we go. So this is Chrome. There you can see there. All right. And then if I were to open up Policy Pack, Internet Explorer, and Edge. Now, this one's a tricky situation. Nobody mentioned it, I don't think, in this in the in the talks. Any of the speakers mentioned it. But Internet Explorer site list mode requires Internet Explorer itself to be running for 65 seconds before it picks up new Internet Explorer mode site lists. What are we going to do? We don't have 65 seconds. We're busy IT professionals. So what we're going to do is we're going to kick it and we're going to, there's this little special command you can run called edge compat enterprise. And then what you can do is you can force an update and bang. Once you have the update here, you should be off to the races. So now if I were to go to policypack.com, which would have only opened up in edge, now it's going to open up in the exact mode I want, which is Internet Explorer 8 in edge mode. There we go, full stop. Everybody gets cookies. All right, so there you go. Um, and that's it. So if we go in this one, this is our default browser, which we said is Firefox. This one's going to open up in Edge, and this one's going to open up in IE standalone. So we are doing all the browsers, all the Java, all the getting out of the local admin rights business. I didn't get a chance to show uh, uh, file associations or start screen. If you like what you see here and want to learn more, the way to do that is Jeremy M at policypak.com, Jeremy M at policypack.com. And with that in mind, uh, I will cheerfully take any questions if there are any. Thank you for letting me be your sponsor today.